So welcome to Masterclass 2. Uh, we're really looking forward to spending this time with you. It's a small group today, which is fantastic. It means there's lots of time for you to speak and ask questions if you want to. So please do turn on your uh, webcams if you want to uh, show us your smiling faces. Uh, otherwise, please feel free to enter your questions in the chat box. So again, my name's Ben. I'm one of the education managers at CET and I'm here today with Aya, my colleague. Aya, do you want to say hello? Hey everyone. So I will be talking uh, at the end of the presentation to you a bit more. So it's really nice to see you here today for our Global English Live Online Masterclass. So this is to give you some information about our Global English course, both the face-to-face -face and the live online course. Global English is a new program um, we launched a few years ago at the University of Sydney. It is unique to the University of Sydney. So we designed and we developed and we run it only at the University of Sydney. But because of this global pandemic, we've taken it online. We wanted to keep the same quality of course as our face-to-face -face course. So our live online course is quite unique. It's four hours of engagement each day with a University of Sydney language teacher. And we focus really heavily on the communicative approach to learning. So it's a big focus on student interaction and active learning. So you will be doing lots and lots of speaking um, with the teacher and with your classmates. So again, we would love to do a little bit of that today. If you would like to join in, there's going to be opportunities for you to share your um, answers with us, either in the, um, in the chat box, or uh, you can do so speaking to us if you want to. Uh, you will also see um, some of the comments from our students in the live online course. We've had a really good response. Students have uh, enjoyed the fact that they can improve their listening skill, their speaking, there's as much speaking as the face-to-face -face course, their motivation. They see that the teachers are some of the best English language teachers in the world, very passionate about supporting students. Uh, and a really important one is also just the social aspect. We're all at home. One of the greatest things that we can do in these live online classes is to meet new people from around the world and share our experiences together. So, uh, I will be talking a little bit more about this um, at the end of the course about the live online Global English course. Uh, but for now, we're going to go into our uh, demo lesson, our masterclass lesson. And I'm really excited to be doing this Today's lesson is called Making the Most of It. Uh, now, right now, most of us are staying at home. And so we're doing lots of things. We're watching lots of things. Maybe you're watching lots of television. I am. Maybe you're doing lots of things. But hopefully you're also making. You're making lots of things as well. And so today, we're going to focus on some really useful language, all using the verb to make. Okay, so let's start. Let's have a look at these pictures here. Have a look. What can you see people making in these pictures? I'll give you a minute to think about your answer. Now, you can um, put an answer in the chat box. Or if you want to speak to everyone, please do. You can give a little wave and we'll um, unmute your microphone and you can give us your answer. If you're not sure, that's okay. I'll be sharing the answers as well. Okay, let's have a look. I hope you got some of these. So these all use the verb to make. We've got the first one, people are making dinner. We've also got people who are making art and also finally someone who's making clothes. So there's different ways that we can use, we can say this. For making dinner, we can say they are cooking. 
making art, we can say he is painting or he is drawing. And we've also got the third one. Someone is making clothes, she is knitting. Okay, so I want to ask you, which of these things would you prefer to make at home? I've launched a poll, so you can choose your answer. Which of these things would you prefer to make at home? Making food, cooking, making art, or making clothes or making craft? What do you think? Choose whichever one you think you would prefer. Okay, we've almost got everyone. If you haven't voted, see if you want to choose one of these. Okay, I'm going to share the results with you. So, nobody chose knitting, that's okay. Um, I don't know how to knit. Uh, one person said they enjoy painting or drawing, that's fantastic. Uh, and most people chose cooking. I agree, I love cooking and I'm doing lots of cooking at home at the moment. Okay, great, thank you very much. So now, let's have a look at a different use of the verb to make. Can you see the picture? So, <laughs> good, I see some nodding. Uh, this is not my wardrobe but it looks a little bit similar. I'm a little bit messy. And so sometimes my clothes can look a bit like this. Now, we're going to look at the verb to make space. We can use this verb to make for things that aren't objects. So when we make space, how do you think this person can make space in the wardrobe? I'm going to launch another poll and you can choose your answer. How do you think this person can make space in their wardrobe? You could choose one of these three answers. They should throw their clothes away. They should buy more clothes. Or they should organize their clothes. Okay. Got almost all the answers in. I'll give a few more seconds. Okay, let me show you the results. So one person said they should throw their clothes away. No one said they should buy more clothes. I think that's very sensible. They look like they have plenty of clothes here. Most people said they should organize their clothes. I agree. And this is what it means to make space. So we can make space by organizing our things so that we can fit more things in. So you can see here before the person made space and you can see after they made space. It looks very, very different to me. Now, this is your opportunity. Have a look at this question. I want you to think about this one. Do you need to make space somewhere in your home? Maybe in your wardrobe, where your clothes are. Maybe in your bedroom, or your kitchen, or somewhere else in your house. Do you need to make space, and how can you do it? So I've got two examples here. You could say, I can make space in the living room by putting things away. I don't know, if you are messy like me, I leave all my things in the living room. Or you can make space in your wardrobe by throwing away old clothes, for example. The clothes that you don't need anymore, throw them away. So I want you to have a think about this. Now, you don't have to. If you would like to share a sentence, this is a great opportunity for you to practice your English. So if you want to speak, just put up your hand, give us a wave, and you can tell us your sentence. You can also type a sentence into the chat box or you can think about your sentence. I'll give you a little time to think about how you can make space in your home.
Okay. Aya, I'll, I'll ask you, do you need to make any space in your home? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I need to make space in my bedroom so I can fit my more clothes. That's, that, that's sensible. <laughs> my wardrobe is very, very small, so all of my clothes are squeezed inside. <laughs> Okay, great. Let's move on now. So, we've been looking at some verbs to make, looking at different uses of the verb to make. So we might make some things in our home. We might make space. But we can also make space in our lives. So, when we're very, very busy, we don't have any space in our schedule to do other things. And this can be very stressful. Maybe your calendar or your diary looks as busy as the messy wardrobe. So every day is very, very busy with your school or your work or all of the things you have to do. Give me a nod if you think you have a very busy schedule. I've got one, I see one little nod. Yazuna, is that a nod from you? Okay, good. Is anyone else feeling like they uh, need to make space in their lives? Does anyone feel very busy? You can nod if it's, if it's yes, or you can give me a thumbs up if you feel busy. Okay. Aya, there's not too many busy people here today. Maybe not at the moment. Maybe usual life is busy, but not at the moment. That's a very good point. So this is a very different time right now. Good point. So let's think about this. Let's say in your normal life, before all of this crazy uh, pandemic has happened, that you are very busy and you want to make space in your life. When we talk about making space in our schedule, we use to make time. So this means we organize our time to be able to fit other activities into our schedule. So uh, we can make time for something or for someone, or we can make time to do something, an activity. And so there's different uses here. So I have two examples for myself. The first one is I want to make time for my friends. So even though I'm working very hard and I'm very busy, I want to organize my time better so that I can see my friends. Maybe I can only see them through Zoom or I call them on my phone, but I want to spend more time. So I want to make time for my friends. So that's the first example. The second example is an activity. Because I'm at home a lot at the moment, maybe I'm eating more than I should, I want to make time to exercise more. So that's my activity to do something, to exercise more. Okay. So I want you to think as well, what do you want to make time for this week? So what's an example for you? I would love to hear or see you type something. What do you want to make time for this week? So again, my examples, I want to make time for my friends. If it's a person, for my friends. You could say I want to make time for my family. Spend more time with your family. Or maybe you're like me and you want to make time to exercise more. Do some exercise. So think about this. Does anybody want to share something that they want to make time for? If you do, give a little wave. Okay, great. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hello, is it Himari? Yeah. Hello, nice to meet you. Tell me, what do you want to make time for this week? Um, I want to make time for my cousin, so I have to finish my homework very early. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. And will you see your cousin on, um, on Zoom or will you talk to them? Mm, no, they will come to our house. Oh, fantastic. That's fantastic. 
Okay, so we'll make sure that we finish the masterclass on time so that you can make time for your cousin. Thank you so much for your answer. Thank you. Does anyone else want to share an answer? What do you want to make time for this week? Don't worry if you feel shy about your English. It doesn't matter if you make any mistakes. Okay, Haruna wants to talk as well. <laughs> okay, great. Hello. Hello, Hello. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. What so, do you want to make time for this week? So I want to make time to do some sports. Okay, fantastic. You're like me. You will want to make time for some exercise. Great. Yeah, I need to do some exercise. <laughs> what kind of sport do you like to do? I like running. I like just running. <laughs> fantastic. Mm -hmm. Running is great. I like running too. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Do you go to a gym or do you run on the street? What do you prefer? Um, to? I prefer to run on the street because I don't have to pay. Yes. <laughs> it's free absolutely um i i agree i actually i <laughs> i like to cycle i ride my bike mm. but i like to go in the local park because it's free and it's nice yeah <laughs> that's great <laughs> thank you so much haruna nice to thank hear you. from you thank you does anyone else want to share a sentence okay Aya, what do you want to make time for this week? I'm going to ask you as well. I actually want to make some time for shopping. <laughs> okay, <great. laughs> Because our shop is starting to open, so now we can go shopping. That's true. I actually went shopping today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I bought some presents for my family. Um, fantastic. That's a, that's a good one. Thank you very much. Oh. Does anyone else want to share something that they want to make time for this week? Okay, great. Minori. Hello. Oh, oh sorry, we muted you again. I'll unmute you now. Hello, Minori. Hello. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. What do you want to make time for this week? I want to make time for practice guitar. Wow, that's great. Do you play acoustic guitar or electric guitar? Uh, acoustic guitar. Uh, My aunt, aunt gave me. Fantastic. How, how long have you played guitar? Have you played uh, guitar <laughs> for years? Actually, I haven't played it yet. Oh, also you're a beginner. Yes. Okay. I love, I play guitar and I love playing acoustic guitar. So that's very exciting for me to hear that. Do you have a favorite musician who you want to learn the songs? Um, I like Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran and he plays lots of acoustic guitar. Yes. Okay. Oh, fantastic. That's great. Very, very good answer, especially for me. I love my acoustic guitar. Thank you so much for sharing, Minori. Good luck learning Thank guitar. You. Thank you. All right, so we'll keep moving. If you want to share an answer at the end, you can share an answer as well. Thank you so much for everyone. Um, and again, it's please feel free to talk. No one minds if you make any mistakes. Don't worry at all. Okay, I'm going to move to a different use of make now. This is a phrasal verb. So in English, we can use a verb and a preposition to create new meaning. This is called a phrasal verb. So our example is to make up your mind. So we use the verb to make and the preposition up. But it's got nothing to do with up like looking up, no, make up creates a new meaning, like a new verb. So phrasal verbs are very, very difficult in English because there's no logic. You just have to learn them and practice them and use them. They are very, very common, especially in spoken English. 
So, to make up, it actually has two meanings. Have you ever heard someone, have you heard the first one, to make up a story? Can you give me a thumbs up if you have heard this before? To make up a story? Okay, a couple of people, great. So this means, actually, can I ask, Himari, do you know what it means to make up a story? Uh, no, I don't know, but my homeroom teacher said that. Ah, good. Well, I've got it here. It just means to lie or to invent a story. Okay. So, for example, um, uh, today I was riding on a dragon to work. I make up that story. I don't really ride on a dragon. Okay. That's a bad example. Maybe you can think of a better one. Anything that you make up. Um, so to make up a story, this is not the one we're using. We're going to talk about the mind. So to make up your mind. Have you heard this before? Give me an, a shake if no, you have not heard this before. Oh, okay. Haruna, you've heard this one before? Yes. I've heard it before. Great. And have you ever used this phrasal verb before for yourself? Um, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Well, I'm going to give you a minute to think about it, and then you can give me an example in a couple of minutes, okay? <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, to make up your mind means to decide to do something. It's pretty simple. To decide to do something. Now I'm going to give you an example. There are many doors to choose in this picture and I have to go through one door. I can't make up my mind which door to go through. So I'm going to ask you for your help. Do this one more time. So I can't make up my mind which door to go through. Which door do you think I should choose? Put in your suggestion for me. Okay. Got a couple of answers coming through. Oh, almost everyone. A couple more. All right. I have to make up my mind very quickly. So I'm going to close this poll and choose the majority. So one person said the black door, one person said the gray door. And everyone else said, go through the red door. That's what I actually thought you would say. So I put the next slide here. I've made up my mind to go through the red door. Okay. So to make up my mind, to make a decision. Okay. Now that's one example. I want to give you a much more common example. So who here likes coffee? Give me a thumbs up if you like coffee. I've got one, Himari, Haruni's shaking her head, no. Haruni, you, Haruna, you don't like coffee? No, I don't like it. <laughs> That's okay, you don't have to. Himari, do you drink coffee? Yeah. Okay, do you drink a lot of coffee? Mm, not so many. <laughs> That's okay, um, thank you both. Does anyone else enjoy coffee? No. Minori, you're saying no. Is that correct? You don't enjoy coffee? No, I don't like coffee. That's okay. That's okay. What drink do you prefer? What do you prefer to drink? I like tea. Okay, great. Fantastic. I like tea as well. In fact, right now I'm drinking my tea here. Okay, thank you. Uh, Yuzuna, what kind of drink do you like? Do you like coffee? No, I don't like coffee. Okay, what do you prefer? Uh, I like Japanese tea. Japanese tea. I like Japanese tea as well. <laughs> That's <Ooh>. good. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Um, let me have a look. Uh, Toa, can I ask you, what drink do you like? Do you like coffee? Yeah, I like drinking coffees. Okay, great. 
And do you prefer tea or do you prefer coffee? And uh, I prefer drink, drink tea or something. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. So thank you all. Look, in Australia and in Sydney, we love coffee. Not everybody, but most people love coffee. And there are many, many, many cafes in Sydney where you can go and get a drink. Of course, you don't have to drink coffee. There's other things in the cafe as well, but coffee is very popular. So let's imagine I'm going to take you to our online cafe and I will buy you an online drink. It's much cheaper than buying you a real drink. Okay, so look at the menu. Can you see all these different drinks on the menu? Most of these are coffee. You can see espresso, piccolo, cappuccino, latte, mocha, americano, filter, all of these things are coffee. There's also tea, hopefully some Japanese tea as well. Okay, so we're going right now to our online cafe and I'm asking you, what would you like? Have you made up your mind? This is some useful language that you can, you can use using the phrasal verb. So you can say, there's too many decisions. I can't make up my mind. Or you can say, I haven't made up my mind yet. So with this present perfect, I haven't made up my mind yet. This means you're still thinking about it. So maybe right now you haven't made a decision, but with more time, I think you will make a decision. Or maybe, yes, I have made up my mind and I will have, and then you can choose what you like. So we're in our online cafe. I'd like you to choose your the answer that works for you. So you can say, I can't make up my mind. There are too many choices. You can say, I haven't made up my mind yet. Okay, so you're still thinking about it. Or you can choose one of the others. I haven't put everything there. An espresso, which is the short, strong black coffee, a milk coffee, a latte, a tea, or maybe just a glass of water. Okay, so has everybody made their decision? If you can't make a decision, just say, I can't make up my mind, and that's okay as well. All right, let's have a look. So I'm closing the poll. So if, if you haven't made up your mind for an answer, that's okay as well. So one person couldn't make up their mind. One person wanted a latte and milk coffee and the rest chose tea. That's fair enough. You know, at this time of day, like I said, I'm having my tea as well. So that's okay. All right. Thank you. Now, that's our phrasal verb. The final thing I want to show you today is called an idiom. So an idiom, do you know what an idiom is? Hmm, that's okay. You probably have seen some before because it's a saying, it's something that you say. It's a collection of words and together, just like the phrasal verb, they create new meaning. So our idiom today is the saying, to make the most of something, to make the most of something. This is an idiom. We're using the verb to make, but this saying has its own definition, its own meaning. Does anyone have a guess what they think that this means? Does anyone want to guess what this means? I see some thinking faces. No confident faces, that's okay. I won't make you give an answer yet. Here's the definition. So to make the most of something means to use or enjoy something as much as possible. To use or enjoy something as much as possible, even when it isn't what we wanted. So a common example in English is this saying, to make lemons into lemonade. So you can see there, if you want a really nice sweet drink and you suck on a lemon, 
Ooh, it's not very good. It's very sour. Okay, so it's not what we wanted, but you can make them into a delicious drink with lots of sugar. So the idea being, even if the situation isn't perfect, it isn't what we wanted, you can still make the most of something. You can still use it or enjoy it as much as possible. So this idea, we can do the same with our time. Even if we aren't in the perfect situation, we can still do something valuable or enjoyable in our time. And this is what we've been talking about today. All of these things using the verb to make is being productive or being creative or finding ways to enjoy ourselves in a difficult situation. So this is an example of you making the most of your time, making the most of your time at home. Even though we don't want to be at home so much, we can find ways to use the time well or to enjoy the time. So I want you to think about how you have made the most of your time at home. Maybe it's some of the things we've already talked about. So you can see some examples here. You can say, I have or I've. We contract I have to I've. I've made the most of my time at home by... And then we've got different examples. They all use the ING, cooking, watching, spending. So cooking new recipes, watching a new TV series, spending time with my family, learning to play a new instrument like guitar. Uh, learning a new language. These are all some examples. So, um, what I would like you to do is think about how have you made the most of your time? Uh, we'll go to this. These are the final questions. So, these are using the different forms that we looked at today. So, some of these you already answered. What do you want to make time for this year? Or what have you made up your mind to do? And the final one, how can you make the most of the current situation? And you can see some examples here that I've given you. So I want to make time to exercise or cook, or I've made up my mind to exercise or cook. And so if the final one that we looked at, this idiom, I can make the most of this situation by doing something, by exercising or by cooking. So I'm going to go back to this one and I'd love to hear some ideas from you. So how have you been making the most of your time at home? So doing something you enjoy or doing something that you think is a good use of time, even if it's not what you plan to do. Does anyone want to give an example? So you can follow the language here. I've made the most of my time at home by and then you can put your own idea so does anyone feel confident to share something that they have been doing while you're thinking i'll ask for one more time aya sorry to interrupt you but i wanted to know just while our students are thinking how have you made the most of your time at home what have you been doing that's enjoyable or creative or productive? I've been uh, cleaning and decorating my house. Very good. So that goes back to our, our first idea. Yes. So cleaning is very good. Um, and decorating your house. Yes. That's very nice. New oh, things. Really nice. I love the plant behind you as well. Yes. <laughs> I've got two new plants as well. And. <laughs> Does anyone else want to share an idea? Give me a little wave if you would like to. Okay, great. Mari, hello. Hi. So how have you been making the most of your time at home? Uh, I've been reading some English book and watch English TV program. It makes my, my life very great. That's fantastic. Do you know the name of the program that you have been watching? Uh, Big Bang Theory. 
The Big Bang Theory. That's great. That's very, very popular one with um, lots of my students watch it. Very good for learning English and it's funny as well. Thank you. That's a really good use of time and a great example. Thank you, Yamari. Thank you. Does anyone else want to share an idea of what they've been doing in this time? Have you been cooking or watching TV, spending time with your family? Oh, sorry, I did it again, sorry. Hello, <laughs> Runa. Hello, again. Hello, so how have you made the most of your time? So I made the most of my time at home by learning a new language. Fantastic, which language? Uh, French. Oh, wow. Fantastic. How long have you been learning French? I started learning French this year, so it's been like four months. Okay. Oh, yeah. And how do you feel about learning French? Do you feel confident? Are you enjoying it? I'm having fun, but it's very difficult. Yes. Okay, well, great. That's a great example, learning a language, learning a new language. Thank you for sharing that and good luck with your French learning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So learning a language, is anyone else learning a language this year? Maybe English? I see a couple of smiles. I think that the fact you're here tonight shows that you are... Um, you are interested in improving your languages, including English, which I think is a great use of time as well. So in our regular, this is the end of the masterclass. The masterclass is very, very different to our live online course. The live online course is four hours a day, Monday to Friday. So we want it to be the same as the face-to-face experience. So in our normal global English live online course, you would be doing much more talking. I would do less talking and I would do more listening and helping you with your English. But this is just a taste today. But it's been wonderful to hear all of your ideas. Now, I thought there's some brilliant things there, learning French, spending time with family, uh, Learning guitar makes me very happy because I play guitar as well. So many new um, ideas of how you are making the most of your time this year, even in the pandemic, even though it's very difficult for so many reasons. So it's so nice to hear all of your ideas. Thank you so much. I hope that no matter what you do, that you can find ways to enjoy 2020, that you can be either productive, um, you can use your time well, maybe learn a new thing or spend time with people. It's very important and it's great to hear your ideas. If you're interested in learning English, I can't help you with guitar, unfortunately, although I would love to. But what we can help you with at CET is learning English, of course. So if you are interested in studying English, um, we're very excited to open our campus, our face-to-face -face classes in the future, but we don't know when that will be because of the pandemic, uh, which is why we're doing the live online course. So if you don't want to wait and you really do want to enroll, we would love to see you in our live online classes. And that's where I'm going to hand over to Aya. She'll explain a little bit more about Global English Live Online. But at the end, I'll be around. I'd love to hear any questions that you have. So if you have some questions about the language we looked at today, you can ask some questions. Or if you have questions about the course or anything else. So Aya, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ben, for a fantastic masterclass. My name is Aya Harrington. I'm a business development and partnerships officer at CT. Um, okay, so I'd like to talk a little bit more about the Global English course. As mentioned in the beginning, we are currently delivering our Global English course online. Uh, it's a small class, maximum of 18 students, 
20 hours per week, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Sydney time. So one hour before Japan time, so 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. <laughs> Japan time and it's South Korea time. <laughs> You can attend free academic and social workshops and events every week as well. You will receive one-on-one -on -one consultations and a personalized learning plan, and we will support you to achieve your study goals. Next slide, please. Ben. Sure. And we will have Masterclass 3. This will be on Wednesday, on the 17th of June and 4 p.m. Japan and South Korea time. We will be sending you an invitation to join us um, after this uh, masterclass today. And um, this one will be called Straight to the Top. We will focus on communicating in the professional and academic environment using direct and indirect language. Thanks, Ben. And this is uh, the price at the moment. I have explained at the Masterclass 1, but um, currently we have a special price of 270 um, Australian dollars, usually Australian dollars 450, and also free admin fee and materials fee. But the application closed on the 1st of June, so if you are thinking about online course to join now, please apply before the 1st of June. Thank you. And we have social media pages, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube, and we will post our future events and all the photos and reviews you can see on YouTube. So please uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube here. Um, if you have any questions, you can type in the chat box or you can put your hand up or you can send us email here to cd.international at sydney.edu.au. That's right. And I've actually, you can unmute yourself now so you can see that little microphone. You can click on that and you can speak if you want to. You can ask any questions you like. Remember, so the masterclass is a little bit different to our live online course. It's a, like I said, a taste. I hope you find it useful. There's lots of language here that you can use to talk about your experience at the moment. So hopefully there's some useful language and some interesting ideas to think about. But of course, the Global English Live Online course, you will be with students from around the world and you will be focusing on doing most of the speaking and listening, lots of speaking and listening practice. Uh, so the teachers are really there to help you. They're not there to be speaking at you like I am for four hours a day. They're there to give you some language and then support your English development. Uh, if you do want to join, I hope you will join us for Masterclass 3. As Aya said, it's going to be a little bit different to 1 and 2, very similar, but we're going to focus a little bit more on that professional language. So when you're communicating to people in either an academic situation or a professional situation, we're going to look at the different ways that you can speak um, and to collaborate, to work together more effectively. For now, does anyone want to uh, ask any questions or do if you want to say anything at all, you can share a comment. Um, we're very happy to hear anything that you would like to say, even if you just want to say hi. <laughs> That's okay as well. Okay, we've got, that's okay. Um, look, it's been really nice to spend this time with you. If you do have questions, like Aya said, you can contact us here on the, on the ct.international email. And you can also visit our website and you inquire there. We're going to send out uh, an email after this. It's got a resource page so that you can have a look at the slides from today so that you can practice that language as well. There were lots of different forms of make that we gave you today, so you can practice as well. 
All right, everyone. I'll, uh, I'll say thank you again. Have a great evening. Please make the most of your time, no matter what you are doing. Uh, thank you, and I'll see you in Masterclass 3. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.